Support for this program is provided in part by the State Center Community College District, including Fresno City College, Clovis Community College, Reedley College, Madera Community College Center, and Oakhurst Community College Center. Learn more about our free college program at sccd.edu. At Clark and Chris Terrence with us as well tonight is Clovis North taking on Sunnyside High. Welcome to Sunnyside Stadium here in Southeast Fresno. Fred, both these teams coming in 1-0 and and on the rebound, hoping for better things than last season. No doubt about it, Dan. And, uh, well, play number one here. Give goes right up the middle to Rodriguez. They're running back in the uh, one-back set that Clovis North runs out of. Well, we missed the kickoff, which was just a uh, pooch kick. Sunnyside got a 35, or Clovis North got the ball at the 35-yard line and had an illegal procedure. So now, second and 10. Trent Loera, the Clovis North quarterback, had a big week last week in their season opening win over Pittman of Turlock. Ball on the ground. Muffed snap looks as though Clovis North managed to recover. They recovered about a two-yard loss on this. Bring up a uh, third and long, and Clovis North is going to go with a uh, hurry-up offense. Now, it's not a Blitz Craig hurry-up offense. They do take their time, but uh, generally they go with a no huddle. Play signaled in from the sideline across the way. Rodriguez, the lone back from the pistol. Cadence is clapped rather than shouted. Lara has the ball knocked from his hand. Is it an incomplete pass or a fumble? Wildcats celebrating as they come out with a football. Covered by the Wildcats, number 32, Jordan Adile, first and 10 for the Wildcats. Sunnyside recovering the football inside the Clovis North 20-yard line. That was Jordan Medeblis that came up with the ball. This is a big break for the Wildcats. Last year when they played uh, the Broncos came away with a 50 to 7 defeat and both teams look to be much improved this season. Big Nathan break. Nathan Gonzalez a junior is at quarterback for the Wildcats sends a back in motion screen pass to the near side down inside the 10 to the 5 and the ball is blocked by number 20 Gerardo Sanchez. Was Gerardo Sanchez he gets down gets inside the 10 to the 5 yard line is going to bring up a first, first down. down. And you can hear the enthusiasm. What else do you expect from high school football? Going to the far side, Clovis North in pursuit, and they pull the running back down for a significant loss. And that was sniffed out from the get-go. That looked like it uh, had a uh, chance at the beginning, but uh, Clovis North had, was going to have nothing to do with that. That was well defended. Dylan Vaughn, the ball carrier. Ball spotted at the 10-yard line. Flushed with pressure, throwing off the hands of a receiver and it will fall incomplete. Oh. Looked like we had some serious holding over there that wasn't called there, right? I was going to leave it to you to yeah. bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I don't know how they missed that. We were up here and we caught that one. Third and 10 for Sunnyside on the 10 yard line. From the far hash mark. Quick out. Picks up about five. Might be just inside the five-yard line. That'll bring up fourth and goal. It appears. Now they're going to spot it at the six-yard line. Now, Sunnyside doesn't have much of a kicking game, so I don't, I don't know if they're going to go for the three here or not. Doesn't look as though they're going for three. It looks like it's all or nothing. No, they are going for the three. It's a low kick, and it is wide. Not sure if someone got a hand on it or 
a bad snap and handle, but scoring opportunity missed by the Sunnyside Wildcats. Yeah, we didn't have a number here for the kicker, so we don't know. Uh, we're going to miss some tonight. We want to thank our sponsor, the State Center Community College District, including Fresno City College, Clovis Community College, Reedley College, Madera Community College, College Center, and Oakhurst Community College Center. Learn more about their free college program at sccd.edu. After the missed field goal, the Broncos get the ball back at the 20-yard line, so real wasted opportunity for the Sunnyside Wildcats. But Clovis North sputtered a bit in their first possession. And they will try to iron a few things out. The throw is low incomplete. Yeah, Clovis North looks just uh, a little off tonight. They're coming off a 34 to nothing win in their opener up at Turlock uh, against Pittman last week. So they got off to a real good start. And Loera, their quarterback, who uh, weighs in at 6'3", 200, he was 14 of 17 in that game last week, 258 yards and a couple of touchdowns, ran for two more as well. Give to Rodriguez up the middle, pulls his way near the 30-yard line, ball Balls comes loose. loose. And Sunnyside's ball. Sunnyside comes up with it. The ball is recovered by Gene. Another big turnover for the Wildcats, and they recover at the 28-yard line. Jalen Bonds came up from his defensive backfield position, and I was able to get that off the ground. And another good opportunity for the Wildcats at the 29-yard line of uh, Clovis North. And yeah, we're not going to see too many huddles tonight, Dan. No, we're not. First and ten from the Clovis North 29-yard line. Swing pass to the near side. Pulled down at the 24. That was Van. You'll find the Wildcats make a lot of use of, uh, out of these uh, short swing passes. Give going up the middle. Dancing, looking for a seam. He's got one to the near side. Inside the five-yard line and knocked out of bounds at the three-yard line. Catano. That was Catano. Freddy Catano. First down, Bounced out, almost got in. Their ball's what going to be spotted at about the two-yard line, Dan. No, they have him stepping out at what, the nine? Okay. Nathan Gonzalez takes the snap. Gibb goes right back again. And it looks like maybe a one, two yard gain at most. Katano again, Freddy Catano. Yeah, he, he was looking for a hole there, bouncing around a little bit, and he couldn't quite find a seam. Did a nice job the previous run, juking a little bit, looking for an opening, and when he got it, he was off of the races. Four receivers, one back. Gonzalez with the give. Kitano trying to change directions, nothing doing, and he's brought down maybe a loss of one. Yeah, Paul Sharp was going to have none of that. Did a good job coming over and uh, holding Kitano from getting any gain at all on that. As a matter of fact, he may have lost a yard, Dan. This is a big offensive line that Sunnyside High puts out in their lineup. Gonzalez looking. Catano just in and out of his hands. Brings up fourth and goal from the 10 yard line. After that last field goal attempt, well, they're going to try it again here. They want to come up with some points. But it's, it's been one of Sunnyside's, I'm not going to say traditions, it's been a pattern where often after their uh, touchdowns, they go for two instead of one. From the 16-yard line, just, it again. just wide. So the Wildcats miss a second consecutive scoring opportunity. And Clovis North 
dodges a second consecutive bullet. Yeah, this has got to be a little bit demoralizing when you get inside the 10 yard line two times in a row, you come up with no points and then have to put the ball back at the 20 yard line. These two teams come in having won their openers last week. Sunnyside a 30 to seven winner over a Tascadero. Clovis North a 34 to nothing victor over Pittman of Turlock. And both of these two programs trying to bounce back. Gordon Woods in his fifth season as the head coach at Sunnyside. Last year was his first year with a losing record at the school. Rodriguez straight ahead, might have gotten a yard. More than likely just got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, well, uh, Coach Wood last season, he went with a real young team, and uh, they only won three games. But this year, they are my favorite this time to win the NYL. They gave him a yard, second down and nine. Ball spotted at the Clovis North, or at the 21-yard uh, line. Rodriguez bullying his way just across the 25. Clovis North, the last two seasons, four and 17 after having won the Valley Championship back in 2012. They made a coaching change, and Mike Jaycott, former Buchanan High head coach, has been an assistant the last two seasons at Clovis East, has taken the helm. And more on that after this play. Loera throwing to the near side. Penalty flag, and we're going to have a pass interference call. Yeah, there, there's definitely some holding going on there. Louis Ramirez, the defender. Pass interference. On the defense, 15 yards, result of the penalty, first down. Yeah, much doubt on that. Uh, no doubt the uh, Sunnyside coaching staff, they were, they were all over to Maris on that. What you were mentioning about uh, Coach Jaycott what, uh, taking over Clovis North, they've only won uh, uh, two games, or four games in the last uh, two years, and he's really installed some discipline with this team. I was out watching them practice this week and uh, there was no messing around. They were really going after it. Players talked about the accountability and the added participation. They said over the summer that uh, they had a tremendous program and great participation. Uh, it was up something 30, 35% over the previous year. Very alertly, Zawara saw the defender breaking through. He had ideas on a reverse, and he kept the football to avoid a sack for a loss of yardage. And the Wildcats did a good job defensing that. They almost uh, looked like they were going to get another turnover on that. Loera was uh, wise to pull that one down. Second and 10, ball on the 43-yard line. Dano Choyum came off limping. Screen pass to the 45. Wrapped up by three defenders and tossed down. And good defense by the Wildcats. That play looked like it was going to go somewhere. And, uh, you know, Teets tried to put a move on and gave Sunnyside an opportunity to get some help. Pretty much blew up that play. That looked like it was going to go for a big gain. Once Schultz had it in his hands, it certainly did look like he had some yardage uh, ahead of him. But uh, those defenders streaked to it very quickly, closed well, and were able to stop that from uh, becoming a big gainer. Third and seven. Loera goes up top, down the near sideline, overthrows his receiver. Nice catch by one of the uh, Wildcat coaches here on the sidelines and uh, knocks one of his players over in, the, in his effort. That's going to bring up a fourth down, and the Wildcats get one first down, have to punt it away. Or the uh, Broncos in. Dan, so far, the Wildcats defenses look they very nice sharp. Job. Yeah. They pursue very well. There's a Gomez to punt. Left-footed punter. I'm not sure if the, if the special teamer for the Wildcats got a hand on that one or not, but it comes and takes a sunny side bounce back up to the 48-yard line. Seven-yard punt. The Wildcats starting at their own 48-yard line, which is so far their worst starting field position of the night. It is. It is. But a good job by the defense. After a couple of turnovers, they get a stop and 
take over possession at their own 48 yard line. Gonzalez up the middle to Wilson. Correction, Hernandez with the ball. Straight up the gut. Give him a pickup of four. Great spirit here at Sunnyside Stadium tonight. Yeah, they have a lot of youth involved out here tonight. For they this. brought the middle schools, their football programs, their cheer squads, and they're certainly having a great time. Change of direction, trying to get back to the opposite side of the field, and he is going to be sacked for a big loss. It'll be a loss of about eight or nine back to the 46 yard line. We have a stop at your play. The officials are having a little conference. I didn't see, I see a flag down now right at midfield. Flags are difficult uh, against the backdrop of a team wearing all yellow uniforms. No doubt. Offense, 15 yards, out to the end of the run, Penalties replay, second down. Achilles heel last year for Sunnyside High. And this will not be something Gordon Wood will take lightly. This could be a 15 yard penalty and I think it's from the spot of the foul, not the original line of scrimmage. A little bit of confusion among the officiating crew as they mark the ball all the way back at the 31 yard line. Yeah, it was uh, the spot of the foul. And this is going to be a first down. And wow, yeah, it's and about 27 to go. Sunnyside High will take a timeout with four minutes remaining here in the first quarter at Sunnyside Stadium. The host Sunnyside Wildcats yet to score, and the same for the Clovis North Broncos. Fred, you were going to talk about the coaching change made by Clovis North following last season and the well, mood, the morale. And uh, uh, Clovis North had a real power going, and uh, uh, Corey Hall, who is the uh, architect of that Valley Championship team, he went on to the coaching ranks. And uh, for a couple of years, uh, Tim Simons came back out of retirement, and the program didn't miss a step. They were a very, very competitive team. And after two years, they hired the uh, often moving Casey Quinn to be the coach, and they were six and six with Coach Quinn. And uh, I guess the uh, night before the uh, football banquet, he left to uh, take yet another coaching job. And uh, Benny Martinez was uh, here for two years, couldn't get, quite get the job done, and now they've turned to uh, uh, Mike Jaycott, who in his last season at Buchanan won seven games. Gonzalez flushed from the pocket and he is wrapped up and driven down at the 20 okay, yard they're, line. They're calling this a fumble and Clovis Indeed. North has recovered. Well now the turnover goes the other way now as Clovis North comes away. And this is exactly what you don't want coming out of a timeout. They just had a disastrous play a personal foul penalty coach would call the timeout to try and settle things down then they turn the ball over and the Broncos have got a good opportunity and by far their best field position by 40 yards in this game ball spotted to the sunny side 27 yard line 350 remaining here in the first quarter of play no score but sunny side with their best field position of the night give to the far side Rodriguez brought down after a gain of about four yards. Roman Rodriguez is not flashy, but he squares up and he almost always goes for positive yardage. Low area, second out and eight. Rodriguez up the middle. Looks to have a first down and looks as though he came down at about the 16 yard line. Again, no huddle right up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10 ball on the 18. 
Rodriguez. Evades the initial rushers. Rodriguez. Looks as though he got across the 15 down to the 14 yard line. And this is what the Broncos would like to do, establish command of the line of scrimmage, start pounding out yards and then open things up for the passing game. Second and seven, ball spotted on the 13 yard line. Give goes to Rodriguez to the near side. Knifes his way through defenders and down to the seven yard line. A couple yards short of the first down, but he did what he does best. Just saw five minutes left in the first quarter and San Joaquin Memorial has a 14 to nothing lead over the first Ohio Warriors. That's over at McLean Stadium. Loera in and out of the hands of a couple of defenders tried to thread the needle in there to his receiver Corbin Beatty who was closely guarded by two defenders and the deflection almost landed up in the hands of a sunny side defender ball falls incomplete makes a fourth and two from the eight yard line I didn't like the looks of that play and it uh, it came close to really backfiring on uh, the Broncos. Fourth down and two, they're going for it. Loera up under center. Broncos appeared to move there, Dan. Prior to snap, false start on the offense number 12. Five yards, replay, fourth down. Looked to be some sort of confusion between center and quarterback, the way the center turned around and gestured toward Trent Loera. And they had Isaiah Johnson in there. It looked like he may be their short yardage guy, but now they're in a field goal situation. Well, can they break the scoreless tie at this point? A minute 53 left in the first quarter. Clovis North. Juan Gomez. And we have our first score of the night as Clovis North is on the board. The field goal good. And the Broncos take a 3-0 lead. You know, Dan, I don't know how to put my thumb on this game so far. This is, every football game is going to be completely different, but it looked like Sunnyside really had some great momentum twice, and they were able to come away with nothing, and a lot of times something like that will happen, and the other team will come down and put seven on the board. The Longcats were fortunate and pulled the Broncos out of the end zone and just uh, give away three points on that one. As last season, as we had pointed out, Clovis North won this game 50 to 7 in three years ago in a, a very unusual game. It was one of Sunnyside's better teams, and they had a 19 to nothing lead at the half. And Clovis North came back and won the game 20 to 19. And it was one I left at halftime. I was a spectator of that game, and I figured uh, Sunnyside was going to, you know, lay 40 points on them. I couldn't believe. When I heard the score that uh, North came back to beat him, they looked dead in the first half. Clovis North quick to, now on the board. 3 0 lead here late in the first quarter. And a very long kickoff fielded back at the eight yard line. Out to the 27 before being brought down. Dylan Vaughn, the return man for the Wildcats. And they will try to get their offense going. Last season, we saw so many pooch kicks, and I like it when they kick deep like that. Just uh, roll the dice, and then on the pooch kick, the other team's pretty much guaranteed to get the ball between the 35 and 40-yard line. And you kick it deep, hey, they may break it, but I like the excitement of the kickoff return. Nathan Gonzalez, the sunny side quarterback, back in the pistol. Up the gut, and a pickup of about five. Same play again. Looks to be a yard short of a first down. Yeah, right up the cut, I like that. Yeah, they spotted it as a first down. To the near side. Pass is caught 
by Dylan Vaughn. And Dylan Vaughn got that, and uh, he fell forward for a few yards. He got a little bit more than I thought after that, uh, you know, initial contact. Bit surprised not a horse collar tackle called on that. That wouldn't have been a surprise. Gonzalez again, straight up the gut. Sanchez, the ball carrier. Well, as mentioned, uh, Rodriguez for Clovis North, and Sanchez has got that same style. He's uh, squaring down and going. He's following his blocks and finding his holes. Sanchez again, first down and more. Into about the into Clovis North territory, brought down at about the 46-yard line. Wildcats have a big offensive line, and they're trying to ride that the best they can right now. Well, they're riding it like a well-oiled machine at this point. First down at the 47-yard line. Quick out to the far side. He's got room to run. Chowan to the 40, well, let's make it the 38, 37-yard line. The nine yard gain on that swing pass. Sanchez up the middle, and I believe he's got another first down. This sunny side offense is operating very impressively. Yeah, they've they've moved the ball well. They've just uh, stalled when they've got uh, down inside the 10 yard line, and that's going to be the final play of this first quarter. So that's going to wrap up our first quarter with our score: Clovis North three, Sunny Side nothing. And the Sunnyside High Wildcats on the march here from Sunnyside Stadium. Glad you're with us tonight here on CMAC, CMAC 2. And you're watching us on either Comcast Infinity Channel 94, AT&T UVerse Channel 99, or our Cablecast app on Roku or Apple TV or cmac.tv backslash edu. Glad you joined us here on CMAC. CMAC is dedicated to empowering voices in our community through media. We offer the tools and training you need to create, distribute high quality video content that's of interest to local audiences. Our community media center is located in the Fresno Met building in downtown Fresno. It also houses CMAX automated broadcast center, which delivers programming to CMAX TV channels on Comcast, AT&T UVerse, and on the internet. First and 10 from the 36 yard line. Gonzalez to the near side, and that's Dylan Vaughn. Yeah, Dan, this on demand where you can just go, you can watch this game a year from now. As, uh, some of my friends and few relatives tune this in when they have absolutely nothing to do on a slow day. This is your Christmas present to them, right? The, <laughs> you just send the, uh, the link? <laughs> yeah, that's one of those gag prizes, I think. <laughs> Third and nine from the 35 yard line. Gonzalez clapping out the cadence, surveys the defense. Now he's scrambling and is not going to evade that. It is a big loss. Back to the 40. Three yard line. That was a good job by Clovis North's defensive backfield. Everybody was covered. There was nowhere to go. The Wildcats will be having their, I believe, first punt of the night. And then we had three turnovers in that first quarter alone. That doesn't happen too often. No, not at all. Early in the season, there's a chance for it much, much more than late in the season. Well, that, I watch that Arizona Hawaii game last Saturday night and Hawaii won the game is one of the first times I've seen a team turn the ball over six times and win the game. Fair catch called for and taken at the 22 yard line where Clovis North will begin their next possession. Their first though of the second quarter as the Broncos lead it three nothing. And that's a frustrating series for Sunnyside High because they really got their offense clicking. 
And as soon as we had that change of direction to start the second quarter, it sputtered and they had to punt the football away. Yeah, it seems like when there's a stoppage of play and they don't have the real quick rhythm going, uh, something comes off a little bit. Now they were they had picked up the pace. The tempo was much, much quicker that possession than what we've seen. That's Rodriguez tripped up at the 25. Receiver in motion, Rodriguez off the right tackle. Might have picked up a yard. Uh, it looks more as though he just got back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, he didn't find too much going there. You know, your front line is really has to be prepared when you have that man in motion coming across the middle because there's three different things that could happen. Big play for the Broncos here. Third and one, ball on the 28-yard line. Three receivers to the near side. Rodriguez, the lone back, Gonzalez. Oh, they really got mixed up on that one. He turned to his left to hand it off, and Rodriguez went to the opposite side of the quarterback. Quarterback is brought down for a big loss, and they'll have to punt the football away. Yeah, that's a real bad feeling when you go for the handoff and nobody's there. So quarterback and running back got their signals crossed on that one. Clovis North will now have to punt the football away. Big break for the Wildcats as Dylan Vaughn is deep at his 44-yard line to receive. Gomez, a high punt. Vaughn signals fair catch. Misses the football. Is it a live ball? If it is, Clovis North has it. And the Clovis North player is... Jim Marshall he was from Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, and we have a flag down, too. I think we're going to have a clip. And yeah, we haven't seen that happen in a long time. No. Well, that certainly got the uh, Clovis North sidelines excited uh, when he's running the wrong way. There's going to be a penalty, and it appears to be on Clovis North, but that's the initial indication. Interference on the punting team, so it's going to be Sunnyside's ball, and it's probably it's going to go from here. It's probably going to be well inside Clovis North territory after all said and done. Clovis North coaching staff out on the field to argue. It's going to be Wildcats ball. It's going to be a first down at Clovis North 35-yard line. This is a big, big break. For Sunny Side. We'll go with uh, some of the pregame stuff we didn't have time to do at the end of this play. We'll do our homework and catch up. <laughs> Looking to throw. A new quarterback is in. Tight spiral and it's overthrown in the end zone. So this is uh, Barajas now in at quarterback. More of the thrower than Gonzalez. Okay, the officiating crew tonight, the uh, white hat, the referee is Thomas Pinedo. The umpire is Mike Illingsworth. The headlinesman is Cody Wilson. The line judge is Pat Atkins. And the back judge is Rick Caceres. Second down 10, the give. He's got a hole on that right side and down just shy of the 20 yard line. It is a first down though, a big first down for the Wildcats. First and 10 now on the 22 yard line. Barajas now in at quarterback. 
Running back now looking for an opening. Gets across the 20, but barely. Just found a big enough hole to fall down for positive yardage. Four receivers, two per side. Katana, no, Barajas with a keeper. And it looks as though he may lose a yard or two. Fred, one thing we certainly noticed on Sunnyside's last possession is the quicker the tempo, the more effective they were. Yeah, when they had uh, the end of the quarter slowed him down, and when they had a timeout, it seemed to slow him down a little bit too. They definitely need to stay in rhythm. Now they're going to put two backs in that backfield. Catano and Sanchez. A bit of confusion, and Gordon Wood is going to take a timeout. It's still the first quarter over there at McLean and San Joaquin Memorial, who was shockingly upset by Kingsburg last week. He's really taken it out on Fresno High. It's 28 to nothing, and they're still in the first quarter. Well, from our conversation during the week, that doesn't come as any great surprise to you. No, the, I think the Warriors are in for a rather long season this year. They had a little bit of a turmoil earlier, and they had a coaching change, and they have virtually new coaching staff that came on real late in the year. Uh, it's difficult to uh, uh, build on something when you hire a new coach so late. They might be a real mess by the end of the season. Big play here for Sunnyside, third and nine from the Clovers North 21 yard line. Barajas in his first series at quarterback. A little out and he's overthrown. Oh, that's but a that live ball, a, too. Exactly right, Fred. Trying to swing it out to Freddy Catano and he overthrew him, but also threw it behind him, which made it a live ball. So a big loss back to almost the 35 yard line and I I applaud their decision to punt on this whether it backfires on them or not you have you want to put them back you don't want to go for it on fourth down in uh, 20 yards to go maybe looking for a little bit of a fake which wouldn't surprise me but you know you just try and pin them inside the 10 yard line just a light punt here looks as though that may have hit one of the up men And the ball will roll dead at the 17 yard line where Clovis North will start their next possession. Leading this one 3-0 with six minutes and 10 seconds to play until the half here at Sunnyside Stadium. Glad you're with us here on CMAC. And Dan once again coming out of a stoppage of play after the timeout. It was a very poor play for the Wildcats. The Indeed. Form formation we hadn't seen yet tonight. Well, it almost looked that I could be wrong, but it almost looked as though one of the up men may have been tipped with that punt. Could have happened. Luera with the give to Rodriguez. Brought down. Looks to be maybe behind the line of scrimmage. Certainly the Sunnyside defense has been very impressive. Yeah, Rodriguez had a... Uh, a series of uh, plays here where he was doing well and the, the Broncos just have not looked consistently in sync tonight. Second and 10, ball at the 16 yard line. Receiver in motion. Give goes to Rodriguez and he is wrapped up. An ankle tackled at about the line of scrimmage. And as soon as the ball was in his hands, it looked like it had some promise to go for uh, six or seven yards. Then the hole closed quickly. And I love those ankle tackles. 5.09 to play in the first half as Clovis North sitting on a three nothing lead. No, you're not hearing a baseball score. That's our score from Sunnyside Stadium, week two of Valley High School football. A little out pass. And the Sunnyside defense adjusted, pursued, and made the tackle at the 14-yard line. And that was impressive by the Sunnyside defense. That was another play, Dan, right off the go. 
I thought that was going somewhere. I thought we may have a 20 yard gain on this and it closed slow, uh, quickly. Sunnyside's uh, really moving to the ball in a way I haven't seen him done in several years. And Clovis North again will punt the football away on fourth and three from the 23. Vaughn, the deep man for the Wildcats. High punt. Vaughn calls for the fair catch, oh. and he is plowed. And that is going to bring out a penalty flag. Fair catch ball made and the Clovis uh, North's, Clovis <laughs> North runner <laughs> dash for the end zone is all for naught, as that ball is not only coming back, but we're going to have some marching going on as well. And the uh, Wildcats again, they're going to have the ball at uh, probably North's 40 yard line. Yeah, we're going to go right there. 15 from here. Now, Dan, a generation ago, that would have been a nice, clean kick play. catch interference on the kicking. Even after the fair catch? First after down. the fair catch, no. But in. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, making my, I'm, I'm making my alibi here for uh, uh, Clovis North on this. I don't think he saw the fair catch signal. We saw it, but it, it, it wasn't where it was just uh, uh, going to stand and, and take it. it. Well, I don't know. Ball spotted at the 39 yard line. Give up the middle. And that is Catano. And he's had some very impressive runs tonight. Nathan Gonzalez back in at quarterback for the Wildcats. Sanchez replaces Catano at tailback and he gets the handoff and look at him go down to the 20 and perhaps the 19 yard line a big first down. First down Nathan Catano takes it down to the 20 yard line and I like the way that uh, Sunnyside's offensive line just opened up a hole and they kept with it they're really pushing their blocks. Penalty flag flies and likely Fred is gesturing maniacally here in the booth for a hold. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're going to hold, you're going to have to disguise a little bit better. Once those arms are extended like that on the outside, they have no choice but to toss Holy that flag. On the offense. Number 99. But you're saying Ten yards. Side has Replay an outstanding the theater arts program, and that young man needs to maybe go take a class. And <laughs> well, have, have to work. I mean, Let's not kid ourselves. There's holding on almost every play. Of course. You've got to keep those elbows in tight, and you cannot extend to that. It looked like he was really reaching. First and 22 now from the 32. Gonzalez has a man, overthrows him, incomplete. Has two receivers down at about the five. One comes up signaling pass interference to no avail. Well, there was some contact there, but there wasn't. There wasn't anything obvious. Very yet. simultaneous. Yeah, you have to let that one go. Right. Brings up second and 22 from the 32. Shuffling of players. Catano goes in motion. Gonzalez flushed from the pocket and brought down back at the 43 yard line. And number, number 65, Keenan Matson, he was just relentless on that. He was not following uh, no fakes. We're going to keep him from getting his sack on that play. A big loss of nine brings up third and 31 now. Always at the Clovis North 41 yard line. Four receivers up. Gonzalez looking for somewhere to find a target. Oh, not loose. Clovis North has the foot. No, Sunnyside has landed back on the loose football and they have regained possession, but it is all the way back at the 37 yard line. A huge loss. A, a huge loss, but an incredible break. Clovis North's guys were just stumbling over themselves to pick it up and try and get into the end zone and. How often do we see this? Fall on the ball. Unless you're a DB. 
Fourth and 52 from the sunny side, 38 yard line. I don't know if I've seen a fourth and 52 in my life, Dan. If I have, it's been a long time. And now Sunnyside is going to take a timeout. That's their final timeout of the half. Something else we didn't get to uh, point out before the game. At game time, the temperature was 91 degrees with no breeze, and we can see across the way that we have a little bit of breeze uh, going from uh, west to east. Yeah, terrific night out. However, we don't feel the breeze here in the press box. It hasn't made its way up here. I think Chris Terrence is blocking it. Well, with the size of his cranium, he can uh, block a lot of a lot of breeze. Not going to go there. Let's take a quick uh, look at a replay on that uh, that last. As the ball you saw there in the top of your screen comes loose. Very frustrating sequence for Sunnyside High as they had some things going for them and once again. Blown plays, turnovers, the muck footballs, and they're all the way back at the at their own 38 yard line now on fourth and 52, punting the football away. Low kick. Gonna bounce at the 37. And it will be downed at the 34. So opportunity missed for Sunnyside on that drive. Punt the football away, and now Clovis North will try to take advantage with a minute and 23 seconds left here in the first half of play from Sunnyside Stadium. Well, how frustrating this has to be for Sunnyside right now. They've had the ball five times in Clovis North territory, and they still have a big goose egg up on the scoreboard. Luera with a single back, looking to throw the football, looking on a screen, and it is snuffed out by the Sunnyside High Wildcats for about a loss of four yards. That was another good defensive play by the Wildcats. They had pressure on the quarterback, and the uh, linebacker was able to come up and still snuff the screen out. Their defensive preparation is very impressive tonight. Loera looking to throw once more under pressure little swing pass to the near side and that's going nowhere but again another loss of yardage. Now this is a time right now Dan I know uh, Clovis North likes to have this hurry up offense they've got third and 12 right now I think I would let the clock run down a little bit more on this 36 seconds left in the half. Broncos up three nothing. Well, at the 33-yard line. Quick out. And again, they lose yardage. Sunnyside has no more timeouts. So, Dan, that's going to be the last play of this first half. 14 seconds to go. Fourth and 15. And that yard, that, that uh, possession did nothing but injure everybody's personal statistics. And indeed, well, Sunnyside High runs the clock out. And that's the end of your first half here from Sunnyside Stadium. With Clovis North sitting on top by a 3 0 count. And Fred, we have seen some impressive things, some frustrating things. And I'm sure both coaches have plenty to talk about in the locker room. It's not going to be a quiet locker room either way. Now, this is one of the strangest halves of football I've seen in a long, long time. I mean, Sunnyside controlled the game. Five times are inside Sunnyside territory. Three times are inside the red zone. All they have to show for it is two missed field goals and no points. Clovis North, on the other hand, they got one turnover in Clovis North territory. They were able to put points on the board, and that's it. They haven't been able to move the ball hardly at all. So there's going to be some adjustments that have to be made quickly by both teams. And uh, Coach Wood has got to be real frustrated with his offense. It's moved the ball real well until you get close to scoring, uh, getting the uh, uh, ball in the end zone. So they were able to run their offense at a very fast tempo it was very effective yeah once there's a few slowdowns uh it was like somebody threw sand into the machine temporarily so should be interesting 
Well, that's going to wrap up our action here at Sunnyside Stadium for the first half of play. Much more to come, and it uh, promises to be very interesting. Both these teams shooting for their second win without a loss. Only one will uh, end the night with it. And until then, these teams are going to take a break, fans are going to take a break, and we're going to take a quick break and bring you much more from CMAC. Support for this program is provided in part by the State Center Community College District, including Fresno City College, Clovis Community College, Reedley College, Madera Community College Center, and Oakhurst Community College Center. Learn more about our free college program at sccd.edu. Katie McEwen and I am the Video Production Academy Coordinator at Sunnyside High School. Starting sophomore year, students learn the basics of camera function and shot composition, as well as basic editing, audio, and storytelling. My role as coordinator is to oversee the academy as a whole, but I also teach the sophomores intro to video production, and then I teach a senior course called Digital Video Production and Broadcasting, where seniors produce a once a week broadcast that airs to the school. Hi, I'm Mr. Weaver, and I teach cinematography and advanced video. Junior year, they come to my class and they learn a lot more advanced techniques with audio, with camera control, with uh, special effects, green screen, just a lot of the, the side, side things that they need to know in video production. And then senior year, uh, it's Ms. McEwen and I split, and then I'm on the cinema side, so it's more of a Hollywood type of model where they produce one film over a longer period of time, but they, feel they produce it to a, a perfection quality. Hi everyone, my name is Joshua Medrano, and I teach a little bit of everything here at VPA with Katie McEwen. I teach intro to cinematography, editing, audio, a little bit of broadcast production, and I'm considered the lab tech here. If something goes wrong with the computer or there's a very technical question with cameras or lenses. The Video Production Academy is a three-year program here at Sunnyside starting sophomore year and goes all the way through senior year where students get advanced uh, training on all aspects of video production from pre to production all the way through post. They, they get to use really top-notch equipment. They have access to professional grade computers, professional grade cameras, lenses. We even have a drone that they can uh, learn how to fly and get licensed to, uh, to use. Their senior year they get to choose if they want to take a course in broadcasting and storytelling or cinematography. The broadcasting class which is a very fast-paced uh, think of it as a television station, a nightly news show, uh, something that has to get produced quickly, be accurate, and be finished and exported and ready to show to the audience in a very short amount of time. Whereas my course, uh, Cinematography, we're much more based like a studio where you know, we'll set up time and time again until the product is perfect, until the performance and the edit and the music and everything is exactly the way the student wants it to be. And uh, I think that's just one of the big differences between the two sides of the Video Academy. Hello, I'm Mr. Mendoza. I teach uh, Modern World History uh, for the BPA. A lot of them come in with a, a, a wide range of skills. Some don't know anything and some know just as much as we do as far as teachers. Uh, and so as far as when they grow, they, they take what they learn and they make it better and better and better. Me being in the Video Production Academy when I was in high school definitely impacted my life because I realized that the three years that I was here, I had a stronger passion and love for video production, editing, and creating stories through the lens of a camera. 
We learn a lot of skills that not everybody has. So using these programs like Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere, it's, it's definitely going to be a big step up, especially when we go to college. We take them on field trips every year to college campuses up and down California, as well as take them on field trips to industry professionals and have industry professionals come in and do guest speaking for the students. A ton of the kids are part of CMAC, which is an extra program that they can do you know, covering live events and just really upping their production game. What I really expect from the students is that they go beyond just attending class and doing the work. You know, they take environment of the family atmosphere, they're forming bonds with friends in here that literally could last for a lifetime, and uh, they're learning video production as they go just as a nice side byproduct. We have potlucks and, you know, we work with each other amongst our different classes. Our classes are really, like, literally next door to each other. We're always there, and it, it brings us really close. Hello, my name is Tim Lyles. I'm the very fortunate person that gets to be the principal here at Sunnyside High School. Opened in 1999, for 20 years now, we've been providing probably the most academically engaging, safe, and family-oriented environment for our students. We're extremely proud of our very strong academic reputation in the area. A huge part of that, of course, is our Doctors Academy in partnership with UC San Francisco. Another big piece is our National Demonstration School status with AVID. What we also are very proud of over the last few years, we've been the high school that sends the most students to Fresno State than any other high school in the area. That's besides all the UC campuses they go to and the privates. Another huge piece of our school is our career pathway programs such as the very well-recognized Video Production Academy that we're in right now. We also offer opportunities for students in agriculture, multimedia and marketing, and Health Pathway, all getting kids some real-life learning opportunities. We think it's very important for students to be involved in opportunities outside the classroom. We do everything we can to provide that. With clubs, we have over 70 clubs on campus with a wide selection of things that kids would be interested in. The visual performing arts, we've also done a wonderful job lately and our teachers have gotten kids into performance opportunities beyond anything we could imagine. Even including the Thursday night art hop, um, orchestra performances, band performances, choir performance, even improv. Kids have every opportunity to be involved in something outside the classroom. Our beautiful campus here provides a wonderful setting for us to build positive relationships on campus. And we think here at Sunnyside that relationships are foundational to learning, so much so that we build into the structures of our school in a variety of ways. But one of those ways is through homeroom. When students enroll here as a freshman, they're assigned a homeroom teacher, and they stay with that homeroom teacher for the next four years. It's that homeroom teacher that actually hands them their diploma upon graduation. It's unique to Sunnyside High School, and it's a big part of who we are. And for athletics, of course, our absolute end goal is athletic excellence. And to that end, we've won several section championships, valley championships, and countless league championships. But the most important part about athletics here at Sunnyside High School, and what we're most proud of, is our very lengthy reputation for sportsmanship. That's the Wildcat way. And finally, two big things that make Sunnyside High School the unique place that it is. First of all, our wonderful celebration of diversity and welcoming everyone into the Wildcat family. And we can't end this video without talking about our amazing staff, from custodial to clerical, from vice principals to counselors, and of course, our amazing, amazing teachers. Everyone on campus does everything we can on behalf of students. Sunnyside High School is the place to be. Go Wildcats!
That's when I was exposed to the biggest bomb. We learned about fusing and firing sequences, how the bomb worked. We learned uh, delivery tactics. We learned uh, about safe escape, blast effects, all of those features about nuclear weapons that no one really knew much about. The impact really didn't hit me until my first alert tour when I was in a fully armed B-52 and saw those weapons inside the bomb bay. The most, most dangerous situation is to have a Soviet ballistic missile submarines off the coast. And, and we know full well what their target package is. The price of failure was death. It's always in your mind before you know what the mission is, and that is the reason I'm taking off is because Fairchild is a target. In your mind, you have to deal with the fact that there may not be a Fairchild left after you get airborne. Family, family means everything. Family means everyone put in, put in one and like we all respect each other. Hi, I'm Tamala Riot. I'm the digital photography and marketing teacher here at Sunnyside, and I'm the lead teacher for the Multimedia and Marketing Pathway. In the beginning, I was a little nervous about, you know, students getting in the way or getting injured or, you know, there's so many variables, and I wasn't all that familiar with sports photography, but I went in to this as a coach, as in, you know, sports, all the athletes have coaches, so I coached my students and focused on one thing at a time, you know, where they should be, where the good lighting is, what shutter speeds to stop the action, how to capture the emotion. And as the season progressed, I kind of backed up and let them do their thing. And before I knew it, their work was getting posted on the websites and used in the social media uh, blasts. And it just happened. My name is Enrique Villanueva and I'm a senior at Sunnyside High School and this summer I had an internship for the Fresno Grizzlies and the Fresno Foxes. It was an amazing experience. I was able to get a lot of knowledge and tips from the professional photographers that were there. They were extremely nice and polite. They were able to help me out with things that I had wrong on my camera or positioning on the field. Um, so yeah, they were tremendous help for me and it was something that I really enjoyed. Well, the first day that you walk in, you don't know what to expect, so you do feel a little bit intimidated. But once you get to know everybody, you know that you're on the same business, trying to help the team out with taking pictures and getting live coverage of it. So once you get to talk to the photographers and professionals there, they make you feel comfortable, they're extremely nice. So you feel like you're all a part of one team, which that was the main goal, and it was the goal, and we were able to accomplish that, all feeling as one, trying to do the same goal. As a high school student, you really don't get to experience what the professionals do. High school students, 
if they're lucky, you get the chance to shoot football games, but not professional games that have professional coverage and media there. So being able to be on the field with them, knowing that you're close to professional players, not just high school students, is something that is truly an unbelievable experience. I enjoyed everything. Being able to go to the ballpark and being able to see all those amazing fans, the professional teams playing, being able to go down on the field level, which is amazing. A lot of people don't get to do that. Being right next to the players face to face is something that I'll truly never forget. Literally, these past two years have been the best years of my life. Uh, I'm not just saying that because I'm on camera, but um, I actually mean it. Um, the amount of things that I've been able to do, uh, not even at school, but off school, is something that I'll always remember and have in my heart. So thank you, Ms. Wright. Hi, my name is Paul Perez. I am a senior at Sanista High School, and I am in the Multimedia and Marketing Pathway. Over the summer, I was given the opportunity to go to Chanty Park to shoot games for both Fresno Grizzlies and Foxes. I really enjoy this experience because I love photography, and this opportunity has been a learning experience, and it's something that I'll never forget. in Southeast Fresno, where our score at the half shows Clovis Norris sitting on a 3-0 lead. That's the score on a brand new, beautiful scoreboard here in Sunnyside Stadium. Dan Taylor with the coach, Fred Clark. And Fred, an interesting first half. There were some promising things. There were some things I'm sure the coaches talked about in the locker room at halftime. Yeah, and it seems like both teams are only in the locker room for about five minutes. You're I, right. They run hurry up offenses, and I guess they run a hurry up halftime. Well, I think what had to be very impressive there in the first half was the Sunnyside High defense. They showed vastly fast improvement over a year ago. Well, it's the speed. I, I haven't seen a Sunnyside team have that much defensive speed before. They've always had weapons on offense, but the way they flew to the ball is Clovis North is a very sound fundamental team, and Sunnyside was very disruptive. And you know, I, they, I know they hope to play on that more in the second half, but Sunnyside's got to get their offense in gear. They moved uh, between the 50-yard line and the goal line most of the half and were came up with nothing. So we'll see what they can do now. Well, the kickoff by Juan Gomez drives the returner back into the end zone where a touchback is signified. We want to extend a big thank you to our sponsor, the State Center Community College District, including Fresno City College, Clovis Community College, Reedley College, Madera Community College Center, and Oakhurst Community College Center. Learn more about their free college program at sccd.edu. So the Wildcats with possession to begin the second half, and they're going to go with a, a quarterback change, and that will be Elias Barajas, who came in off the bench in the second quarter and now comes in again to start the third quarter. This is the only time the Wildcats have started a series in their own territory. Give up the middle. Got a pickup of about three. We only really saw the Wildcats attempt a deep ball twice. Most of their uh, passes were just uh, dink and dunk passes. Barajas seems to be more the thrower of the two quarterbacks. Although Gonzalez certainly showed a good arm in uh, pregame and halftime drills. Give up the middle to Sanchez. And he's got the first down. And he got hit. Boy, that was a really got his clock clean there as he got first down yardage. And he was he's up. But it looked like he spent a, a little bit of time on the ground there, but it looked like he uh, took something up in the neighborhood of the head. Yeah, it looked like he had a shoulder pad to the head. It didn't look like a dirty play, just uh, a stopper.
Give again to Sanchez. He's got a hole off the right tackle, and he follows it for a pickup of about three yards. And Danny, even though it's not as hot as it was last week, we may see some cramping up. We'll see how the athletic trainers have uh, adjusted to this at halftime. Because last week's games, a couple of them weren't over to close to 11 o'clock because of all the uh, timeout they had uh, had for the cramping players. So far, we haven't had one. Sanchez again in the backfield. Second and seven, ball at the 36-yard line. And he takes the handoff and goes right up the gut. First down across midfield to the 48-yard line. And once again, got a hand with that Wildcat offensive line. They just blew Clovis North off. Well, they've got some size up there and some ability as well. Sanchez has had no problem finding holes and as a result, finding a lot of running room. Ball now on the Clovis North 49-yard line. Barajas again to Sanchez. And he picks his way to a gain of about two at the most. This Sunnyside offensive line, this is the best they've had in a couple of years. It's, they're light years away from where they were last season. Well, we did a couple of their games last year, and you remember what it was like there. And this is a completely different, more uh, polished team than last season. Something what a year will do, huh? Second down and eight, ball at the 47-yard line. With an up back to block, Sanchez takes the handoff, and he is down to about the 43, which would put him about three yards shy of the first down. Boy, Sanchez at 5'8 and 155 pounds, he, he runs about 50 pounds uh, higher in his weight. But he is a darter. He can dart, find the openings, and find the yardage. And take the hits. They've got enough back to do some blocking there behind the right tackle. That's right where it went, and North is able to adjust and stop that for virtually no gain. Look as though he just grabbed a handful of jersey and mm -hmm. flung him down. This could be fourth down and a long four yards to go for the Wildcats. And Certainly want to give our kudos to the Sunnyside High Video Production Academy. Katie McClone, the coordinator, and uh, their students are working the cameras and doing some of the technical tasks tonight and doing a terrific job and learning a great deal, no doubt. Well, that's going to wrap up that possession for Sunnyside as the drive stalls on the 44-yard line with fourth and four, and they're going to punt the football away. Angling it to the near side, hoping for a roll, and they get that roll down to the 10-yard line and out of bounds. And the Wildcats have been able to keep Clovis North pinned in their own side of the field pretty much a whole night except for that one costly turnover that put the points on the board. Clovis North was really watching for a fake on that, Dan. There, there was uh, hardly any pressure on that, and th they were really watching. And the way Sunnyside had lined up, I was, thought that they may, may try a trick play there on the punt over to the left side, but it didn't happen. Stay tuned. Loire at quarterback, he struggled a bit in the first half after a tremendous season opener a week ago, going 14 of 17. And again, strong and aggressive pursuit to the ball, and they drive the receiver out of bounds at the 13-yard line. And Sunnyside's linebackers, especially the Sam Maldonado, he has really been wreaking havoc. You know, you look at uh, uh, Clovis North, they, they haven't been able to play off the blocks at all. Rodriguez in motion. Pass through the hands of the intended receiver. That was Corbin Beatty. Incomplete. Or sorry, Nick Pickett. Nick Pickett. And now a big play for the Broncos at third and eight on the 15 yard line. Linebackers. Look poised to drop back into pass coverage. Clapping out the cadence and now looking for a receiver. But he's in the grasp of a defender and down he goes at the four yard line. A loss of 11. And North is going to have to punt the ball away from the shadows of their own 
goal post. Oh, what a job by that sunny side defense. They've done a spectacular job tonight, and they're going to have good field position following this punt. Sunnyside going to change returners now and has throughout the first half been Dylan Vaughn and now it would appear Louis Ramirez is going to go back and take up the return role. But as you said, Fred, they should come away with very good field position. Gomez with a high but very short punt. Bounces at the 29 over to the 35 and it will roll dead at the 37 yard line. All things considered, North came out of that pretty good. We have a score over from McLean Stadium, and it's not even halftime yet. And San Joaquin Memorial is leading Fresno High 56 to nothing. And this is one of the things where it's hard to hold a score down. Memorial is only dressing maybe 30 players, and you cannot tell people not to play hard. Right. And the mercy rule still doesn't kick in, so well, they, they might be able to get three quarters of 100 on this. Switch of quarterbacks. Fumble. Ball comes loose at the 30. And apparently North signaling that they have the ball. We haven't seen the official. Yes, we have. It's Clovis North's ball. Well, a big break for the Broncos getting the football right back. Wildcats second turnover of the night. Buchanan's ahead of Bullard 14 to nothing at the half. Hoover trails Golden Valley up in Merced 13 to nothing at halftime. Washington Union and Kingsburg are tied 7 to 7 late in the second quarter. An opportunity for Clovis North and a lineman for Sunnyside was unable to get off the field fast enough, so Gordon Wood quickly called a timeout to avoid a penalty. No flag. This is just drive coaches. There's no nuts. flag on the play. You know, I'm you out. have 10 guys on the field, or you have 12 on the field, and we have our assistants, we have our eyes up here in the sky. This is something that should not happen. And then you burn one of these precious timeouts that you could really use. These things keep uh, uh, keep coaches, coaches to, up awake. Yeah, and tearing Later their night. hair out at that's night. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And when you're much younger, uh, it's it's tough to sleep after you lose a game and things like this happen. I'm surprised more coaches don't have heart attacks. Don't even want to think about that. No. They go through so much stress, so much pressure. Such a challenging job. First and 10 from the 31 yard line. Going up top. And the signal is complete. We were blocked by the Sunnyside sideline. Pass looks complete up to about the 44 yard line. So big first down for the Broncos. Loera clapping out the cadence. Give to Rodriguez who's wrapped up in the backfield for a loss of two. Right back to the line of scrimmage. Four receivers to the far side. Now one in motion. And that's Rodriguez that he's going to take the handoff. And three Wildcats in hot pursuit. Drive him out of bounds at midfield. Rodriguez, he gave it everything he had on that. He went, went high in the air to try and get an extra yard or two. And he just, just got a hair into uh, sunny side territory here at the 49-yard line. And again, no huddle. Quick throw out and it is dropped and incomplete. The ball was thrown a little bit low, but it still appeared to be catchable. Now fourth down and four yards to go. And I would imagine. They are keeping the offense on the field. And right after the line of scrimmage. They're probably gonna try and draw them offside and call a timeout. Nope. 
Quick throw in and out of the hands of the receiver, incomplete. And Sunnyside will take over possession at midfield. And I, I definitely question that call, Dan. I mean, uh, you put the team 30 yards back downfield, kick it, get it into uh, maybe inside their 20-yard line and make that offense work to get any points. You know, you, Sunnyside has been held without a score this whole game despite having all of these opportunities. You don't want to keep giving them great field position like this. Because at some point in time, they're going to take advantage of it. Yes. And, uh, however, I don't think that's the uh, what the plan was when they went for it on fourth and four. Barajas back at it quarterback. So the rotating quarterbacks continues for the Wildcats. This go around Barajas draws the assignment. Pass is incomplete. Bounced it just a shy of the receiver. The shuffling of quarterbacks always takes me back to the early 70s and uh, Don Coriel at San Diego State when he had two very talented quarterbacks in Craig Penrose, who later went on and played in the NFL, and Jesse Freitas, and he alternated them on every play. Wow. Good memory, Dan. <laughs> Eric Coriel before it went to the NFL. Yes. Barajas pulls it back down. Look to run, and three Clovis North defenders bring him down for a loss of five. And I think that's our first three and out by the Wildcats tonight, isn't it? Indeed. Well, the punt unit comes on for Sunnyside High. Yeah, Dan Cor uh, Don Coriel, he, both he and George Allen cut their coaching teeth at Whittier College. That's right. That's right. The poets. Had the fair catch called and taken at the 25-yard uh, line where Clovis North will begin their next possession. And Fred, we talk about Eric Coriel, and of course, you think of Don Coriel and you think of the passing game. But that was not his style through much of his coaching career. He was, as a young coach, a run-oriented guy, believed passionately in the running game, led with a run, and then at San Diego State, trying to recruit against the UCLA's and the USC's, where John McKay and Tommy Prothrow and company led with the run. He felt he had a better opportunity to win if he went for, the, for quarterbacks. Well, but uh, those big Pac-8 schools at the time really didn't put a premium on quarterback play. They were out recruiting all the top running backs, so Don Coriel rethought. He read a lot of, uh, uh, was it Teddy Meyer, the, the TCU coach, who was the architect of, of uh, the passing game the, uh, that we currently see today, but Coriel went and read a lot of uh, his old articles and uh, books on his offense and completely changed his philosophy. And I certainly think Don Coriel belongs in the Hall of Fame. Oh, I, I have no doubt. I agree with you completely. And when you said that, that uh, when he was head coach at uh, Whittier, and he followed George Allen, they both believed in that strong ball control game. Could, but can you imagine a guy like George Allen leading a team called the Poets? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now uh, get third and long again here for Clovis North. They have about eight yards to go for the and first down. Here we down. go again, and they were showing blitz. Sunnyside High showing blitz from the near side. Loera caught it. Changing the play call at the line of scrimmage. Slows things down a little bit. Looking to get the ball up in the air. Deep ball. Can he get his receiver? It is hauled into the 40-yard line. Complete pass to the 40-yard line. That was uh, Brendan Lemay. And he just looked that one in. It looked like it might be a little bit overthrown, and he never took his eyes off the ball. Big catch, biggest offensive play of the game yet for the uh, Clovis North Broncos. 28-yard pass. Loera going up top. And the ball down to the 39-yard line of Sunnyside High. Rodriguez to the far side. Runs into his uh, blocker. 
reverses course and picks up about five, maybe even six yards. Made everything he could out of that. Loera did a good job. That ball just about got away from him on the snap. He did a great job of pulling that down. Well, I shouldn't say a great job. You're expected to do that, but it looked like it was coming pretty quick. Second and six. Loera with a man over the middle. Double team. Pumps, double pumps. Throws again to that man who was over the middle. Catches him on the far side. And he is out around the first down marker. And that was Lemay again. He did a good job getting that one hand underneath the ball. Three receivers, four receivers actually to the near side. Now one goes in motion and he takes the handoff and has two sunny side defenders waiting to greet him. Loss of five. Well, Loera did a, I think a good job just keeping a hold of that. Sunnyside's penetration on that really blew the play up. Big play, fourth and six. Ball on the 34 yard line. Loera. Pressure again. With a fake, airs it out, and it is incomplete, and he has badly overthrown two receivers, and the ball goes over on downs to Sunnyside High. And the Wildcat defense, they had pressure on Loera the whole time, and they've bought him down a few times, but he has not had time to really set up in the pocket and uh, assess the field. And, uh, What's impressive is after the turnovers, the Sunnyside defense did not have a lot of time to rest and recover on the sideline. They were right back out there, and they did a nice job. They, as the uh, coaches like to say, it was a rubber band effort. They, they uh, bent, but they did not break. Good point, as usual. Gonzalez now on the short pass that goes nowhere. Once again, the change of quarterbacks this series. Number 18, Nathan Gonzalez. replaces Barajas at quarterback. Sanchez, the back to his right. He sends him in motion, looking to throw it. No, he's going to tuck it and run. And he is tripped up and may have, but uh, I'm not so sure he got back to the line of scrimmage. Six inches one way or the other. Now, you're not going to say the half yard line. Uh, no, you will never catch me saying that. So I've learned. Three receivers to the near side. Little substitution there. As Noah Cash Barajas comes into the backfield, replacing Sanchez. Rolling the pocket is Gonzalez, throwing to the near side, and his receiver unable to haul that ball in. He was short of first down yardage. His momentum was going to take him out of bounds nonetheless. Elias Solis, the intended receiver on that play. And that is going to be a three and out for Sunnyside. Well, we don't have any real updates. Uh, Redwood is uh, beating down Coach Sharton's former team, the Dinuba Emperors, 21 to nothing at the half. Buchanan still has a lead of uh, over Bullard and Central, one on the road to Sacramento, and they got a 21 to nothing second quarter lead on Grant Union, who's always a uh, regional well, power. Pretty strong program, you're right. We don't have a lot of updates. Nice punt by the Wildcats. Fair catch signaled for back at the 28-yard line, and that's where Clovis North will begin play from. CMAC is a nonprofit organization created to help the residents and organizations of Fresno. They produce non-commercial media. They're ready to start utilizing CMAC equipment and facilities. We'll sign up for a workshop and submit programming for broadcast. To be eligible for CMAC membership, you must live, work, or go to school within the city of Fresno or Clovis, or be employed by an organization or agency serving either city. So sign up and become a CMAC member today. Go to their website to learn more. That was a hard fought one yard gain for Clovis North. They may call it a yard and a half. Two 
two receivers to either side, or either side, whichever you prefer. Rodriguez flanked alongside Lerma. Gonna throw to the far side, the ball is dropped. Brings up third and nine. And the Broncos have not been able to get their passing game going at all, except for that uh, one pass down here to Lemay. I don't think they've had uh, much of anything over 10 yards. Sharp contrast to last week when they were very, very effective through the air. Yeah, about 20 yards of reception. Six men up on the front line for Sunnyside. Penalty and flags fly. And it worked. Kick up there by Clovis North. Full start on the up. Sunnyside's just showing more yeah. on defense than we have seen out of them in a couple of years. Their stunting is a lot better. They're really uh, they're keeping the offense guessing. You can see impressive speed. Third and 14, ball at the 24 yard line. You gotta get that ball out to about the, the 39, the 38. In motion. Fakes the handoff and he is sacked and driven down at the 15 yard line. That was Javion Lacey that just came in pretty much untouched. And again, a very impressive stand by Sunnyside High's defense. That's gonna be the last play of this rather quickly moving third quarter. After three quarters of play, we have just one score on the board, and that was a field goal. So on that brand new scoreboard in the west end of the Sunnyside Stadium, it shows Clovis North leading three to nothing, but we have got 12 more minutes of football to play, and who knows what may transpire. Both these teams were very high scoring a week ago, and just the opposite tonight. And the games they've played, they've opened with each other the last several years. And the scoreboard's been lit up, sometimes rather one-sidedly, but a lot of points. And, but going back to last week, I still have not got this season figured out. I was wrong as much as I was right uh, last week. And that's a week. rarity. And yeah, and I just, and I still don't have things figured out. With your so knowledge of and passion for high school football, that just does not happen very often. Well, maybe it's the age. I know, no, no, I'm not well, going there. Uh, Chris and I were joking a little bit before the game here. All these guys playing in this game were not even born when we started doing these. Well, let's resume to action here. <laughs> yeah. As Gomez is about to uh, punt. Oh, high snap. He manages to pull it down and get the punt away. It is a short punt. It's going to land at the 40 and take a bounce across midfield. And the sunny side returner is going to dance out of the way and allow it to roll dead and the wildcats will take over at their own 47 yard line all things considered that was a very successful end of the play for the broncos that looked like it was going to be a disaster in the sunny side was going to get the ball in great position or maybe a safety and to get a punt out with that type of a roll good break for them but again gordon wood shifts his changes his quarterbacks barajas number four back in the backfield for the Wildcats. Right across the middle, threads the needle, complete for a first down at the 43 yard line. And Leah Solis pulls that one in. the give to the tailback. Well, now it's for a first down. They spotted the last one a yard short, but this time it is definitely first down yardage. And the Wildcats are still mixing it up, but they still, still haven't gotten in that end zone. Freddy Catano now, the running back alongside Barajas in the backfield. Three receivers to the top of your screen. First and 10 ball on the Clovis North 43. Catano in motion. And a little bit of movement. Officials blow this play dead. Five yards remains. And that's first the down. sort of thing Gordon Wood likes to see happen. A motion penalty will get it marched back five yards. 
to the 47 yard line. Well, our friend Matt Johnson, who was tied with Kerman earlier in the game, they're down 15 to 7 out at Kerman. Stallions looking for their first victory of the season. Well, you know, they'll play hard. Catano in motion again. Barajas comes up throwing complete to the 40 yard line, a pickup of five. Fan Bond was wide open there. He just got the ball, made his move, kind of laid down. I thought he had a little bit more yardage than that. Maybe his knee was down. They only gave him a four yard gain on that, Dan. Just across the 40 yard line at about the just shy of the 41. Second and seven. Again, three receivers to the top of your screen. Barajas wants to go deep, wants to go for it all. He's got him in, and unfortunately, he was not able to get around the Clovis North defender. And one of the officials deems that to be a pass interference penalty and flings out that penalty flag. Up the ball was maybe a little underthrown there. Dan, what do you think of uh, coaches being able to challenge a pass interference in the NFL now? It's going to make for some long games. Yeah. If they can decide it, it's anything else in the replay, if they can decide it in 20 seconds or less, I'm all for it. If they can't, hey, let it stand. And Say, I've not seen it anywhere near that. Neither have I. First and 10 now on the 24-yard line. Sunny side high driving, hoping to take a lead in this game. Trailing three nothing since the opening quarter. Barajas flushed from the pocket. Wants to go left, but too many defenders are there to stop him. And he is brought down for a big loss. And as effective as Sunnyside's offensive line has been on the, uh, well, we have flags down here too. I wonder if we had a hold in there. They've been very effective on their run blocking, but pass blocking, not quite as much. Now, holding. So, compounds the... On the offense, that penalty play. is declined. Declined a penalty. Result of the play, second down. Are they going to take the loss of the play and the down? It's a good move on Clovis North's part, too. You have a seven or eight yard loss, or you have a 10 yard penalty. Brings up second down and 18. Ball at the Clovis North 32 yard line. Barajas wants to go up top. He's got a man. He's got him at the 30 yard or 20 yard line before going out of bounds. That was Dylan Vaughn on the receiving end of that pass. So third down, but now third and five from the 19-yard line. We have nine minutes and 37 seconds left in this game. Fast-moving second half. Sanchez back into the Wildcats backfield. There's Catano comes out. And Sunnyside burns their second time out of the half. Gordon Wood sees something that he was not happy with out there, and he calls a timeout. Wants to get his offense straightened out here. Three nothing our score. Clovis North sitting on top. They have been since the first quarter. 9:37 remaining here from Sunnyside Stadium as the host Wildcats on this very festive school district night, trying to drive to either tie this one or hopefully take a lead and turn it over to their defense to hold it. You know, one of the criticisms I have on our fancy new scoreboard, it doesn't have where the ball is, and it doesn't have how many timeouts each team has left. I will have to register a complaint with the powers that be. Timeouts, right. no. Ball is, is at the bottom of the of the board. Third and five on the 19-yard line. you're right. Good correction. Only the timeouts. Give goes to Sanchez, who manages to pick up a couple. Very close to the 15 yard line. He would have to get across the 15 for the first down. About four long three yards to go down. And yeah, exactly. It will be fourth and three. The Wildcats kicking game is not coming on. You're right, though, Fred. You wish you could see the 
timeout situation up there on the board, but it is a beautiful new scoreboard. Yeah. Great addition here to Sunnyside Stadium. I like the graphics on it. And I, I, well, we are going to have a field goal attempt. We have a different kicker in here, too. So the spot will be from the 24-yard line. It is up. And Wide it is no left. good. That was closer than the first two. That is the third field goal that Clovis North has missed tonight. Yes. And I'm so aware that Clovis North still has three timeouts left and the Wildcats have one. So the Broncos dodge another one as they continue to cling to this 3-0 lead here in the late going. 8.52 to play from Sunnyside Stadium. Lovis North taking possession at the 20-yard line. Malarima still in at quarterback. He's gone the entire distance. Throwing out to the far side. Pickup of about a yard. You know, the last time I remember a three to nothing game here in uh, Valley High School football, Bullard beat Hoover three to nothing in one of the Battle of Barstow's. I think it was Coach Arax's maybe fifth year at Bullard. And Hoover had numerous chances like this, but uh, Bullard was able to win the game three to nothing with a bunch of suspended players. Boy, as prolific as both of those offenses were throughout the years, it's hard to imagine a three nothing game with those yeah. two, but you would pull that one up. That's tremendous. That's outstanding. Yeah, I think Chris and I may have done the game, I, but my memory doesn't serve me that well. Big, big play for the Sunnyside defense. Third and one now from the 29-yard line. Exactly eight minutes left to go in this game, and we're going to have a timeout. timeout Clovis North, I believe that's her first timeout of the half. Mike Jacob wants to talk things over with his offense as Sunnyside had uh, plugged that front with six men. Well, we have certainly talked about Sunnyside High's defense throughout the night, and it has been very impressive, particularly when you reflect on a year ago. Yeah. We, we had a three and nine season a year ago, or uh, could have been a three and nine. Three it and eight. Been three and eight, yeah. Gordon Wood in his uh, four previous seasons came in right away uh, with an eight and four his first year, a nine and three his second year, seven and four in the 2017 season and then slumped last year to a three and eight where he was very very young team for a mistake prone team a lot of penalties and uh, they they struggled throughout the season yeah, that nine and three team he had they went down they beat Tulare in Tulare in the playoffs and then they were coming against Sanger in the quarterfinals I have I gave him a pretty good chance to go in there and the, they lost 56 to nine <laughs> but that uh, win that they had over Tulare Rodriguez gets the call and he appears to have bowled his way over for a first down. And that Gordon Wood has defeated his Sunnyside team twice has defeated Tulare in the playoffs. High scoring games. That one I think it was 66 to 54 when they beat him. It's a little bit different than tonight's game. Four receivers to the near side on first and ten. Loerma fakes the quick out and tries to run it and he is pulled down. Yeah, if they're generous, they'll spot it back at the line of scrimmage, but more than likely, it's a two-yard loss. I have wondered uh, how come we hadn't seen, you know, more quarterback delayed draws, and maybe that's why. It's a very effective call, but the way that Sunnyside defense is pursuing, tough to make it work. Second and 12, Loera with a throw and he hits his receiver and he's down the far sideline for a first down. And that was uh, Brennan Lemay again, junior wide receiver. Caught it, let a defender run past him and uh, made some positive yardage and uh, eaten up a little bit more time now too. 7.06 left on the clock. Give to Rodriguez, bouncing off linebackers and picks up about five yards, close to midfield. San Joaquin Memorial continues to uh, pound on Fresno. It's now 63 to nothing in the third quarter. 
Second and five. Give goes to Rodriguez, looking to the near side, cuts back. He's got plenty of yardage down to the 41-yard line and a Clovis North first down. That was a nice run by Rodriguez. It looked like he was just about to get tackled, and he changed, changed directions and didn't lose his step in speed. Mitchell's going to whistle this one off. And Sunnyside has just taken their final timeout at the half, Dan. Bit of frustration there on the Sunnyside sideline. Well, we may have seen something. The last two plays for Clovis North have been their, uh, two of their biggest games of the night. Well, the best defense can sometimes be a very good offense, and right now this drive is keeping that Sunnyside offense off the field as well as trying to drive down for a potential second score of the night, be it field goal or the ability to punch one into the end zone. So far, this has been their best drive of the night. They've went like, uh, what, we have about 38 yards now, and uh, most of them have come on just three plays. 6-16 to play. Clovis North clinging to a 3 to nothing lead over Sunnyside High. Both teams having won their season opener a week ago. And both teams in turnaround mode, trying to improve on difficult seasons of a year ago and looking much better than a year ago. Give going to the back. Linebacker comes up and brings him down with an ankle tackle. Well, it's Bren Brennan Castro, another junior running back. Bit of confusion as the linemen got right up and were ready to go, but quarterback and some of the skill position players still looking for the play call from the sideline. Man in motion, just the decoy. Give goes to the running back who's down to the 30 yard line and keeps this drive going with yet another first down. That was Castro again, lowers his head just at the point of contact. Got himself a couple more yards. First down at the 30, about the 31 yard line. 534 left on the clock. Give to Rodriguez. Tiptoes his way through and picks up about three yards before he is ridden down by one of the Sunnyside linebackers. But flicks the ball at the 29 yard line of the Wildcats. Clock continues to run, coming down to the five minute mark. Rodriguez moves up alongside Loerma in the pistol. He takes it. He's got a hole, he's got running room, and then three defenders come up to bring him down at the 21-yard line. It's gonna be real close to a first down there, and yeah, they're moving the chains again. Their most effective drive of the night. By a long shot. Sunnyside's defense is well if they, they played tonight, they may be wearing down just a bit, and Clovis North's line looked like they're kind of running downhill now, we'll see. First and 10 from the 20-yard line, and an official is going to blow a timeout that's been called by the Sunnyside High coaching staff. Well, again, we want to thank our sponsor, the State Center Community College District, including Fresno City College, Clovis Community College, Reedley College, Madera Community College Center, and Oakhurst Community College Center. Learn more about their free college program at sccd.edu. And we ask you to help support CMAC's nonprofit mission of empowering voices in our community through media by matching a tax, making, I should say, a tax-deductible donation. Your generous contribution to CMAC 
supports our nonprofit community media center that provides the free airtime and low-cost digital media training and tools that allow diverse and often underserved communities to tell their stories and express their views through video. To make a donation, please complete the secure online form at the website, and you will receive an automated response indicating that your donation has been received by our organization. So be sure to check out the website and support CMAC. First and 10 now at the 21-yard line as the Broncos put in together a very impressive drive. Loerma back to throw. Flushed from the pocket. Finds a man. Into the end zone. Is it caught? It's a touchdown. Touchdown Clovis North. It was at Lemay again, and he just walked, looked the ball in, didn't take his eye off of it. Yeah, he's there, been their big receiver tonight. A very impressive drive tonight. Their most impressive drive of the night. Coming inside of five minutes of the 430 mark, resulting in that touchdown toss, an impressive toss and grab with a defender all over him in the back corner of the end zone. I love you too. Yeah, he made that one happen. And the extra point is good to extend the Clovis North lead now to 10 to nothing. So the onus is on the sunny side high offense. They're going to get this ball back inside of four minutes and 30 seconds to play, trailing at 10 to nothing. With all the great field position, moving between the uh, the lines, sunny side doesn't come up with anything. They need a big return on this. Need to make a couple of big plays happen. And that was rough on the Wildcats. Their defense has just done such a good job the whole night. That's the last, the first time that North has been able to put a sustained drive together. They went 80 yards on that after that miss. They have been on the field a lot in the second half, and no doubt they have got to be feeling it. Yeah. Not taking anything away from what was a very impressive drive by the Clovis North offense. Their best of the night. Line drive kick that is landed on at the 31-yard line by the Wildcats. Okay, I'm going to editorialize again as I have to do once or twice a game. If you're going to kick it short, forget those ridiculous pooch catches, kicks that we see all the time. That's the way to kick it short. Put it on the ground. It's not that easy to field something on the ground like that, and all kinds of fun can happen. And I'm about all kinds of fun happening. Uh -huh. That uh, football service announcement from our former special teams coach at Edison High School, Fred Clark. A long time ago. Gonzalez back in at quarterback now for the Wildcats. No correction, that is Barajas in at quarterback. And the quick hitter to the outside is complete, picks up about seven yards. They're going to give him five and call it second and five at the 37-yard line. And it does stop the clock. Big man in the backfield for blocking purposes. Go to the near side, juggled with hauled in. First down, out near midfield and pulled down just shy of the 50-yard line. First down, Wildcats. And he hit a wall before he came down there, too. That was Fan Van who made that catch and had a very impressive run on top of it. Takes it out to the 49-yard line. 4.07 left on the clock. Give goes to Sanchez who gets across midfield, picks up two. You know, the Wildcats, they really can't afford to have too many of those, Dan. You know, we have under four minutes to play, and you have to have things to stop the clock a little bit or get some big yardage. And they have no timeouts left to stop the clock. So if they do score, they're going to have to uh, try an onside kick. They're not going to be able to uh, count on their defense. 
Ross going deep. He's got a man. Open. And he overthrows him inside the 20 or the 15 yard line. He had a receiver open, but the pair could not connect. 325 remaining in this one, second down and eight. And third down, eight yards to go. They got to pick up a first down just to keep this continued. A little bit of uh, confusion here on the sidelines. Big play for the Wildcats. Barajas, high throw, and his receiver not able to pull that one down. Yeah, Perales at 5'11", uh, he got up as high as he could. It was just floated a little bit over him. And if the Wildcats are going to have any chance at all tonight, Dan, they're going to have to convert on this play. This is not just a big play, that is the play. 321 remaining in the game. Fourth and eight for Sunnyside High. Barajas rolls to his right. And he overthrows his receiver. And the ball is incomplete. And it goes over on downs to Clovis Norris. Yep. And that, that was just about it. And even if the ball wasn't overthrown, the receiver was so far over, I don't know if he would have been able to bring it down anyway. So the ball goes to Clovis North at their own 49-yard line. I don't think we're going to see that much of a, a hurry up here now. We're still going to go no huddle, but I think they're going to be uh, waiting a little bit longer pe between running plays here. 3.16 on the clock. Rodriguez up the middle, picks up two before he runs into a wall. Not a lot that Sunnyside can do about things now. They've used up their timeouts. They're going no huddle, but they're they're waiting until they get the signal from the sidelines before they, uh, well, maybe not. Second down at eight. Now they're going to take this down as far as they can before they put the ball in play. Rodriguez, and he's well past the first down marker across the 40 to the 38-yard line. You know, I just saw uh, kind of a disturbing score from Memorial Royals ahead, or from McLean, and Memorial's ahead of Fresno High, 71 to nothing, and they were ahead 63 to nothing. I hate to think that they went for a two-point conversion. I, I'm hoping it was a bad snap and somebody had to run it in. That would kind of be the, uh, the epitome of it, wouldn't it? Okay, and this is Castro again. Just short of the first down. We're inside of two minutes now, Dan. Indeed. Would help if I get my flip chart correct in the right spot. Yes. A minute 40 left on the clock here from Sunnyside Stadium. Clovis North on top, 10 to nothing, having just scored. And then the three and out gives them the ball right back, and they're knocking at the door again at the 31 yard line. Second and three. Luerma, Rodriguez, darts up the middle, first down, down to the 24-yard line. Well, that's probably going to do it. A minute 15, the clock is going to continue to run down now. I'll just run two, two more plays, and that's, well, maybe three now. Certainly want to extend thanks to the Sunnyside High Video Production Academy for a job well done tonight. And of course, the crew here from CMAC.
get a sense of the play clock situation. Seven seconds, five seconds. And he takes a knee and that wraps it up. That concludes our season opener here on CMAX tonight. Quite a defensive struggle as Clovis North got on the scoreboard with a field goal in the first quarter. And then the defenses took over from there until we got the late scoring toss by Clovis North to extend the lead to 10 to nothing. Fred, your thoughts on this one tonight? Well, at halftime, this was, again, one of the stranger games I've seen in a long, long time. And, uh, Sunnyside had numerous opportunities to score. They just bogged down. And, you know, you have to hand it to Clovis North's defense a little bit, too. We talked about how uh, Sunnyside's defense really neutralized Clovis North. Well, when it came to crunch time, as you said, it was the rubber band. Clovis North's defense, they, they bent quite a bit. They kept them out of the end zone and forced three field goals to go wide. So, and I, I've got to tell you, uh, I'm surprised the way it ended up as at the uh, beginning I would have thought that Clovis North was going to win this game uh, rather convincingly and they won the game but Sunnyside gave them a good fight and Sunnyside to me looks like uh, they should win the NYL at this point. Well and that's really Gordon Wood's focus. He uses the non-conference to build his team up. He likes to play some big opponents, uh, Division One opponents in particular, to prepare for the potential playoff matchups that might come in November and December. And uh, when you look at this team going forward, their defense tonight vastly improved over what we saw out of them a year ago. And remember, they rotated quarterbacks on each possession. So once he settles in on a quarterback, I would imagine at that time he'll feel that uh, their offense is in a much better state going forward. Yeah, I'm going to, you know, withhold my opinion on that. I don't quite agree with rotating them every possession like that. And uh, I think it takes teams out of a flow. Uh, but Gordon Wood's claim to fame uh, is uh, coaching much better players than I ever did. And he's a head coach and I never was. So he knows his team, he knows what he's looking for. Well, and I think Fred, it's a safe to, uh, it's safe to uh, believe that by the time he gets into league play, we won't be seeing that rotation of quarterbacks. This is an effort to determine who that guy will be yes. by the time he gets into league play. No doubt. We again want to thank our sponsor, the State Center Community College District, including Fresno City College, Clovis Community College, Reedley College, Madera Community College Center, and Oakhurst Community College Center. Learn more about their free college program at sccd.edu. So tonight here at Sunnyside Stadium, our very first high school football telecast of the season winds up a 10 to nothing final score in favor of the Broncos from Clovis North over Sunnyside High. For Fred Clark, I'm Dan Taylor. On behalf of our crew from CMAC and Sunnyside High, we want to thank you for being with us here on CMAC 2 tonight and join us throughout the fall and early winter for much more high school football right here on CMAC. Good night.